Hi everyone, and it's finally time for the full review of the Asus Republic of Gamers Crosshair 7 X470 board. Okie dokie then peeps. So, we're gonna have a quick look inside the box. It's a crosshair board at the end of the day, so it's a rug board, so it does feel, it's got like a more premium edge to it. The, uh, the crosshair is about the same sort of price as the MSI M7. You do get a lot more going on in the box with this, and there's actually quite a bit more going on with the board as well. So you get a really nice sticker pack, you get uh, an introduction to ROG, where they're thanking you and stuff. Driver CD, I still think we should be getting these on USB. A coaster, and then you get your manual. And then when you um, delve underneath, I've already unboxed this, which has been on live on the channel already. You do get four USB cables, you get a normal RGB extension cable, you get uh, an RGB um, a dressable extension cable. You get the two screws that you're gonna need for your M.2s, because there's two M.2s on here. This is your antenna for your wireless uh, with a lengthy cable on it. And essentially it's magnetic and it stands up like a bit of a shark, so you can put it on the top of your case. And then you do get a, uh, an SLI bridge should you need it. Now I'm gonna bang all this back in the box because I wanna have a good look around the board itself because it is one of the most feature packed boards with the stuff that's actually going on on the board as well. It certainly feels the most premium one that I've had in my hands so far. So you can see around the power delivery around the top, it's all the um, uh, the sort of stuff that you'd expect from the ROG boards. Asus normally do, especially once you do get into the proper ROG stuff. The VRMs and everything do kind of kick it a nickel, and they're normally massively overspec. This one is no different. You do get an eight and a, a four pin up at the top, but you really don't need to add that extra four pin um, CPU in. It makes no difference. It didn't help with our overclocks. You're only really going to need that if you're really, really like pushing the envelope. And anyone at home on air or water cooling won't need that. Um, one of the things I do like on this board though is there are plenty of fan headers, like you've got three up here. So you've got the CPU, the CPU optional, and then you've got the AIO. So the AIO will run at 100%. Keep that in mind if you're like adding a fan in to cool something down or something. Or if you do have an AIO that you wanna fit, this is where the pump would go if it's got a normal four pin um, header. You do get um, RGB normal four pin, and for the first time you get a three pin addressable on the top of the board as well. You've got the PCI, uh, poster readout here you get power and a reset button on board then you've got USB 3.1 down here another fan header you've got another fan header here the Asus fan extension here you get water cooling zone down here as well so you can have your in and out temps and your flow rate going on down here another fan header then you've got RGB and then the RGB addressable You've then got USB 3 here, um, you've got USB 2 here, but this one counts as a USB 2 as well, this is your ROG uh, connect button. You've got the safe boot and the retry button down here, plus a slow mode switch for the, you know, the big overclockers amongst you out there. Then you've also got a thermal sensor here, you've got another fan header here, there's another fan header here as well. There was another thermal probe somewhere I noticed on this and I've forgotten to pick up on it. Oh, there's another fan header there as well. So there's an awful lot of fans. Let's go through, we've got one, two, three up there. Coming down, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So there's a total of eight four pin PWM fan headers on there. There's an awful lot of those going on. Round the back, an absolute plethora of USB 3 going on. You've got the BIOS flashback, CMOS clear, Wi Fi is on here as well. You can buy a version of this without Wi Fi. USB 3.1 Gen 2 here, gigabit Ethernet, gold plated uh, audio connections. And then you've got your Supreme FX stuff going on down here. It is kind of behind the shielded section on the board as well. So the, uh, the actual stuff that you've got on the board is pretty spot on. The only thing I can notice that they haven't done, which maybe some of the others have done, is that the secondary M.2 doesn't have a heatsink. And I think the reason why they've done that is because they've allowed for a 110 millimeter long uh, one on the bottom, rather than just the 80, which the other manufacturers have done. If I think if they had just gone with the 80, they probably would have had a heat sink on it. If you're worried about that though, you can get aftermarket heat sinks for about 10 pound. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about it too much. The other thing that they've said about this heat sink that they've got on above the first PCI Express 
is rather than it just um, slowing down the rate in which the SSD warms up, which they're saying some of the other manufacturers can do, they are saying that this can actually drop your uh, M.2 SSD temps by up to 10 degrees. We did give it a quick whiz indoors as well, and we did notice at least a seven degree drop on ours. So that's all something to keep in mind. Layout's all kind of nice. What they have done is to allow for uh, bigger heat sinks and stuff. You'll see that the first PCR Express isn't right at the top. This is where the first PCR Express would normally be. You can see they've dropped it down to the second one, so there's a little bit more room around the socket. It gives them more room up here for fan headers and all that kind of stuff. So it is actually all kind of, you know, they've put some serious thought into it. So, yes, that's the way it looks. Like I said, I personally think it does look really nice, but also it's pretty ram-packed with features. Okie dokie, karaoke. So we're gonna go into our testing, and uh, it's all going to be kind of part of the conclusion as well. But first and foremost, straight away, we've got like 20 odd pages of results on the Overclock 3D website if you want to go and have a look and pick the graphs apart. I'd say with this one, it's probably one that you are going to, if you're thinking about buying it and you are thinking about spending the money, it is going to be worth going to have a look at the graphs. Also, it's worth paying attention to what I'm just about to talk to you about with the BIOS because I tested the board on the 0505 BIOS. All of the results were done on 0505. You guys at home are probably not going to get a chance to see that though because it's technically a pre-release one and it's been superseded already. So earlier on this morning, admittedly I tested this a few days ago because there's been an awful lot of work that's had to go into getting all of the boards ready for launch. But um, uh, this morning we had the 0805 BIOS come in. Um, now I haven't got enough time to be able to completely retest the entire board because that's like two days work. Uh, and get it ready in time for NDA. But I will cover some points about the BIOS towards the end. So overclocking wise, it's, it's ASUS at the end of the day. So I have big expectations from them and they didn't um, uh, let me down in any mon you know, massive way considering we're talking about pre-release stuff. Um, most of the uh, um, CPUs are going to be, or uh, most of the boards are going to be sort of aiming for around the 4.2 gigahertz mark on all of the cores. If you don't know why all of the cores is a big thing, you need to go and watch my CPU review. So the 2600X and the 2700X CPU review, so that you can understand the difference between all cores and the part of the boost. Um, so uh, 4.2 gigahertz, that was below 1.4 volts. It was 1.375, so it did quite well with the voltage being able to get 4.2. If you want to push past that mark, you're looking at around 1.5, 1.525, and this did again manage to uh, get uh, 1. Point, uh, sorry, 4.275 as a manual um, stable clock. We did manage to go even further above 4.4 gigahertz for just a screenshot, but it, that is just a screenshot. That is not stable. Um, you would need lots and lots more volts to be able to get that stable. And to be honest with you, the CPUs either wouldn't last very long or they would overheat in a heartbeat. But it's just part of the quirkiness of the, uh, the Ryzen architecture. So it did really well. 3400 megahertz memory was really easy as well. So it did 3400 megahertz as an absolute breeze. And that's something else that they've been pushing through was the IMC with the, the new CPUs, because at the end of the day, you need to remember that the IMC is on the CPU and it's not anything to do with the chipset like it was a few years ago. But anyway, so that side of it, it did really well. When we went into the scores though, and looked at some of the results, some of them were all right, some of them weren't necessarily all right. Um, so Cinebench, for example, you can see it didn't, it, you know, overclocked, it did okay. It was second place to the MSI. Stock, I wouldn't kind of rate at all very much. Gaming, this is the one where it actually did really well. Really, really well. This is the place where it absolutely shines. The 3D results that we got on this, it was like we were using a different graphics card because both the overclock and the stock absolutely whizzed past everything else that we did. When you move on to something like Blender though, again, it comes back to the uh, what I was saying to you about before and it's kind of in second place, which was something that I wasn't particularly like ready for. The MSI had done really well, but this is why I said to you about the 0505 and the 0805 BIOSes. So, they're the results that we got. They are, they are our test results. We did run a couple of smidgens through uh, to pick out the ones that really were like bothering me. So the Cinebench, the um, Blender results, 
and changing the BIOS looks like they may have got things sorted. Now I may, if I get a chance, go back and retest the, the, the board again, but right at this present moment in time, there's too much on and I just can't get it. And I want to let you know um, uh, what my thoughts are with it. Now, based on it coming in, you know, second place, it did actually come in second place, but the, the results were actually quite minor. When you look at the difference between the two, so for argument's sake, the um, uh, you're looking at seven seconds on the 1080p, and then you're looking at about 20 seconds on the um, the 4K run. Which 20 seconds, yeah, that's a fair bit. If you have a look at the rest of the graphs, it's that they, 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 they get way, way further out. So it's not too bad. <coughs> Weirdly, they come in at round at the same sort of price, the MSI and the Asus. MSI definitely have done um, uh, wonders with the, their initial kind of launch boards. And really with, with the Asus, the only thing that I've got to say about it is um, when it does come down to it, the, the, the stuff that they've got on the board, so all the extra fan headers and the lighting and the design and the quality feel and the stuff that you get in the box, it's kind of night and day. The Asus is definitely the more, uh, what I would say is the more quality product. I'd also say, kind of hypothetically, do you know what I mean, speculating that from the BIOS, the testing that I have seen with that new BIOS, it is just an early kind of little glitch. So it's very unusual for them to have done that, but you know, at the end of the day, I, from what I've seen, I think it's all gonna kind of level out quite well. Um, so I may end up having to do the whole flipping thing again but then again, I might just not bother. At the end of the day, they both come in at around 240 quid. They are incredibly close, and it's really gonna depend on where your allegiances lie. But from at the time of testing, and I do mean this as well, at the time of testing, when I did get them done, the MSI did manage to spank the crosshair. So maybe what we need to take from this is, because it has felt for a little while, the Aces has got a little bit too relaxed with stuff. There have been times where I picked up uh, issues in the past and they pretty much were arguing with me before they actually ended up getting things fixed. And maybe things just don't, I, I personally don't think that they feel like there's a priority as much anymore. Well, I think what this has shown them is that the uh, little peeps, MSI, have just pretty much slapped you with a wet fish and they've caught you with your pants down because your flag lead, you know, flag shipboard, leadership board, just managed to get spanked in a couple of the, well, a few, most of the graphs in my review. Now, they, they could say, oh yeah, but we're gonna fix that with the bars now and that's what the people at home are gonna be able to buy, but MSI sent me the board and it was ready for me so that I could do my review like this in the same kind of manner that you did. So which one do you wanna do? Do I have to retest the MSI in a couple of weeks when they change their BIOS and it makes theirs a bit better than yours again? I don't really know which way to go. End of the day, I think it's a good thing because like I said, MSI did do really well. And normally I don't mention other brands like this, but it's not very often that the, the ROG boards get kind of like moved down the graphs quite consistently. And that's why I think you should go and have a look on the OC3D website. I've got a funny feeling I will end up uh, being requested to put, um, uh, to give new BIOSes a look. But at the end of the day, it is a spanking board. I think it's just quite refreshing that it didn't top the graphs throughout. This one definitely does look better. It's got more fan headers. It's, it's just a nicer board aesthetically and feature wise overall when you put the two side by side it just made me smile that some of the numbers in the graphs probably weren't as good as they thought they needed to be or i think they needed to be um so yes it's i i like it when this kind of thing happens it puts a little bit of a smile on my face so yeah maybe um a little bit more kind of polish on it next time asus but you definitely do need to go away and uh, get things sorted before these really start hitting the uh, retail market. And I think also as well, we need to make sure that the retail boards have the BIOS updated before they go out to end users as well. Um, so uh, like I said, I tested this on 0505. I know there's 0805 out there. So if you do buy a board, make sure, or buy one of these boards, make sure that your board is on the newest one. 
which you should do anyway. It's quite easy to do from the website, download it. You can actually do it through the internet and the BIOS if you're actually worried about it. But if you do build a new system with this, make sure you update the BIOS because I have a funny feeling it's gonna unlock quite a bit of extra um, uh, performance for you without you even really needing to do anything. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with a review that he's probably gonna get moaned at quite a lot about. Out. Thank <laughs> you.